All right. Hey there. Hi there. Hello. Happy you're still good. Hope you're still safe. Hope you're still well. Black Lives Still Matter. That hasn't changed. It's not going to change anytime soon. I know I don't need to say this and maybe I sound fake for doing it, but you know, it's one of those things that I feel like, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, hi. It's been a while. It's been a pretty long time since I just sat down and talked at a microphone and I forgot how to do it for a little bit. However, I have a different setup because, um, I'm a dumbass sometimes. Not really. However, the way that I have set this up is really stupid because I am literally in the middle of a bunch of stuffed animals. So if you hear things moving, don't worry about it. It's fine. <laughs> but in the spot, um, sound goes to die. So, um, how are you people? <laughs> Uh, I decided to break out some materials that I really enjoy working with, and it's been a while since I've done so, so, you know, I'm a little rusty, but I, um, also was watching something pretty recently with B, and both of us were- are pretty into it? Were pretty into it? It's a musical. And, um, hi, I'm not a theater nerd. I wasn't able to do that when I was in high school because my school was too tiny to have a theater club or any, like, other theater things outside of our class things. We had drama class, but I wouldn't really count it as theater because we didn't do anything modern day. It was all like Shakespeare and like, in, in theory, they'd be fun, but like we didn't get to do- I was stuck with the class that always did dramas and tragedies. The other class got to do Romeo and Juliet, which was the perfect blend. And like some of the people in there were actually really good at like blending the comedy. So, you know, it's fine. I am a big fond- I'm big fond of various musicals. And uh, this one's one of those guilty pleasure kinds of things where I didn't watch the original musical, nor have I ever heard the full version of this musical. Uh, I am not going to pretend that I know everything about it. In fact, I know very little about anything outside of the movie, but I'm really, really fond of the original Tim Burton movie. And I love it because, like, one, I was a big fan of Tim Burton growing up, and I was also a huge fan of Johnny Depp growing up, so those couple of years where the internet decided to cancel Johnny Depp was pretty terrible, honestly, because I really like Pirates of the Caribbean, like, the Curse of the Black Pearl is so good. I would watch that on repeat. It's so funny. Um, I still enjoy that movie. It's so good. It's, like, one of those movies that, like, held up about five, ten years later, and I was like, oh shit, this is actually, like, a legitimately funny movie. So, coming back to that, I'm big fond of Sweeney Todd. Um, <laughs> Tim Burton movie where Johnny Depp sing? Yes, please, give me more. And Helena Bonham Carter, and, like, I don't know any of the other actors in this movie. Oh yeah, Alan Rickman, and then, um, Peter Pettigrew. I'm so sorry. I don't know his name. I know Alan Rickman because I, I would also watch a lot of movies with him in it. it. wasn't just Harry Potter, but I, like, I feel bad because it's like one of those things where if Alan Rickman was never Severus Snape, he wouldn't have been as typecasted. And like, the judge in this movie, like, is basically Severus Snape, which is even creepier because he's creeping out on a young 16-year-old. Um, yeah, that's a whole other thing. So, side note, spoilers, if you haven't seen this movie, please go watch it. It is so good. If you like musicals and you want to give, like, a musical movie, a, like, adaption a chance, I would 100% recommend Sweeney Todd. One of the things that I found out pretty recently, slash, like, kind of re-remembered? I don't know. I have watched, um, the Sideways, or Sideways is, a. Uh, analysis of Sweeney Todd and like why the music in it's so good and I just recently watched the Bobby Byrne video about why the adaption is so good. Um, one of the main things is that Tim Burton worked with Stephen Sondheim and like one of the things that like modern day musicals are so terrible at is like there's this sense of trying to turn it like turn a stage show into a movie with just basically filming big blowout movie things and trying to make it huge when like theater is you know i mean yes it can be big like the spongebob new musical is huge and but they are able to do it in such a small space and it's still like lively and beautiful but the thing is like musicals change and movies last forever so it's one of those things where 
if you try too hard to capture the feeling of a musical, you're kind of doing it wrong. The feeling of a musical, I feel like, okay, hear me out. I'm not a music person. I didn't take, I've taken choir classes and I, last time I did that was in high school. So I'm not the person to go to for music lessons or anything like that. But when musicals are done, I feel like you gotta really just remember that it doesn't change and you're always going to see the same things over and over one of the, and like you can perfect it is the thing with music or with movies in in a movie you can perfect things you can reshoot things and they'll always be perfect in musicals things are going to change every night people will decide to do something different something will break like even in the stage the live recording of spongebob the musical they definitely had like bigger budget and bigger like everything but if you watch it over and over like I did, you'll notice that certain things break and certain things mess up and like it adds to the charm of it and it's fun to watch every single person every single time, which is kind of like what kind of sucks about musicals is because you want to watch every single person on the stage at all the times, but you can't do it because you can only see it really once unless it's films like Hamilton and Spongebob, which like, oh, thank God that those two were please give us more of that especially like i still want to go see spongebob live spongebob live is so much better and this is coming from somebody who adores the musical that was recorded with ethan slater anyway um <laughs> the sweeney todd musical or movie is so good like there were certain things that were changed and tom Bur or tom burton tim burton changed certain things he took out some songs he like changed a couple of things where that where the songs were shorter uh but he still made it like work <laughs> and part of it is he worked with the creator of the musical and it's important to do that because if you try to like do something and you don't really work with the original creator it can turn out kind of shitty and like I'm not gonna lie. I like Les Mis, the movie. It's okay. It's decent. There's definitely parts that are really good. However, y'all slept on Sweeney Todd. <laughs> that's, that's not fair. The two are completely different and also they were filmed differently and also in being filmed differently, one was definitely better and the other was worse. <laughs> uh, no, but uh, one of the things that you I kind of like noticed upon rewatching it would be in like having two people who are really into something and loving it. You can notice like these little details that you probably didn't notice the first time you watched it. And it's been like five years since I last watched Sweeney Todd. Actually, probably like ten years even. I ha I, I don't remember watching it at all during college or past college. But um, one of the things that I noticed or like we both noticed was that like the a lot of it was just maybe two or three people on sta on the screen. There wasn't a chorus. There wasn't um, there wasn't everybody in the background doing their thing and singing the chorus. It was like usually just Sweeney or just Mrs. Lovett and Sweeney or like maybe two or three people on like on screen. Maybe there were other people off screen and a couple of times there's like a huge crowd of people, but in those moments they needed to be there to sell the whole thing and like. There was no fourth wall breaks, even though in like the musical, from what I've understood from watching Sideways like several times, uh, he mentions how there's a fourth wall break during the song Epiphany, and it's kind of genius to take that moment. And was it him or was it Bob? I don't remember, but I just watch a lot of Amazon. Anyway, um, he takes that moment and he puts him in a frozen time in London, and like that. That is so, that's such an, that's such a cool way to turn like a fourth wall break into something else. And then taking like the instrumental of the opening song and not having them tell the story because you're going to watch the whole story. It's a short, it's a short movie, like in comparison to what a musical is. And that's kind of fucking amazing. Like, compare it to like, I don't know, Cats or... Like, even Rent to some extent. I actually really like the movie Rent. I haven't actually listened to the full soundtrack. I have it, uh, I just, I skipped to the ones that I knew from the movie and, like, yeah, they did an amazing job. They had, like, the original cast, but there's also, like, that sense of their stage actors and that's not a bad thing. Like, some people can translate really well from stage to, um, 
Hollywood theater. And, like, I, I don't know, I, I respect both, like, pretty strongly. I am, I love, I love theater. It's cool. I'm not, like, huge theater nerd, but I, like, if I find an actor that I'm like, oh my gosh, I really like them. I get really excited when I see them in other things. Like, I didn't know that Patti LuPone, the person who voices Yellow Diamond, was also Mrs. Lovett, so I have some ideas for that. That's gonna be a thing. <laughs> but, like, also, um, gosh, um, other other actors i don't know i can't think of things right now because i'm just really obsessing right now not super obsessing it's not like that big obsession and i don't think i could do that because um it's not like popular so i can't be like oh look at this thing and blah, blah, blah. i just really like this musical it's so good and johnny depp does such a good job he's got a really good voice for this like he gets those growly bits and then when he gets to sing like um pretty women that one is so good you like alan rickman definitely has like it, he's not the greatest singer but he's a pretty good singer and then also like the duets between mrs lovett and um sweeney during a little priest listen to little priest it is the funniest freaking song ever because of the wordplay it is so funny it's so funny and then epiphany is such a good song like uh every song in this movie minus a couple like uh also oh my gosh and um joanna reprise i love it so much because like you can you can start to see sweeney's descent into madness and it's so good it's such oh god it's so good i love I love this musical. I love this movie. I can't even really say that I love this musical because admittedly, I have not watched the musical nor have I listened to the full musical and admittedly, I don't think I ever will. I might listen to a couple of other songs and see other interpretations, but I like, I love this movie. And if you want to see an adaption of a musical and one that takes extra care in creating a movie, I would 100% recommend Sweeney Todd, the Tim Burton adaption. Anyway, I think that's all I have to say right now for Sweeney Todd. I will rant about Sweeney Todd for hours and I don't need to do that right now. I'm actually really happy with how this drawing turned out. I didn't like it when I was finishing it, but when I got to the end, I when I sprayed it, I was actually really happy with how it ended up looking. So there's that um next time i hope to draw fenris because i was planning on doing that but then i got distracted with things but i'm gonna pause here i'm gonna go play some kingdom hearts because i want to play kingdom hearts and i'm at nightmare world so i deserve it anyway thank you for watching thank you for listening and i'll catch you in the next video